يظهر على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران ان في خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف الليل والنهار لايات لاولي الالباب my dear brothers and sisters all praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blessed us who guided us who has given us the ability to think to walk and has given us the ability to distinguish right from wrong and for that we are ever thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing especially on a day where no wealth no sons or daughters will be of any help except the deeds we earn يوم لا ينحو مال ولا بنون الا من اتى الله بقلب سليم that the day except the one who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a pure and clean heart قلب سليم من كل سوء a heart that is free from all impurities we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we gather here in these few minutes in this precious time in the best time of the day in the, in the best day of the week that we purify our hearts remove animosity jealousy and envy and hatred and replace it with mercy compassion understanding and love especially as brothers and sisters in a time where so many are trying to divide us so many are trying to split us whether it's here or overseas but we control our actions and our intentions so as you sit here brother and sister purify your intention purify your heart and one way to do so is to always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize that what you have is a great blessing la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in a country where over 98% of people do not believe in Allah the way they're supposed to we're about 1% not because we're better than anyone or chosen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us hidayah and guidance so we have a big task ahead of us we have a big responsibility that Allah has blessed us but now he's testing us with blessings others are tested in different ways Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, are we going to be true servants? Thankful and show gratitude. As Allah says, وَلَا إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَا أَزِيدَنَّكُمْ That when you're thankful and you show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah increases you. And here it's not limited to any particular thing. You know, you make dua, وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِنَّ عِلْمَ Though Allah increase me in knowledge. But here, the increase, when you're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not limited to only knowledge. But everything that is beneficial to us as humans. So we come with a grateful attitude. A positive attitude. And realize this day, this second you're alive is another second of opportunity that many others don't have. That many others have left, have passed away. So you're given that extra second, extra breath of opportunity. To remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah says, وَقْتَهُ إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ Seek the ways to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's many different ways to accomplish that goal. All of us do it within our own capacity. But we have to not have that feeling of relaxation, of stagnation. That it's okay to relax. That tomorrow I'll do it because tomorrow may never come. Many have had said tomorrow before you. Many have said that yes, one day. But that day never come. The time is now. Your time is now, brothers and sisters. Whether you're 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, it doesn't matter. We all have a mission and responsibility to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that this light of Islam reaches all doors in this country. So together we complete each other. So then we realize there's no time. You know, if a house is on fire, you're not going to ask your wife, is that, was it because of the dinner or because of what got burned? No. There's no time to argue. You either all get saved or all will burn. You're in it together, brothers and sisters. So once we realize this, all of us are a special component. 
All of us are special and have potential to be great. So when we hear the stories of the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad we realize those are not fairy tales. Those are not bedtime stories, but rather humans who were the worst of people. But Allah has elevated to become the best of people because of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So in the ayah I mentioned in the beginning, when Allah talks about verily in the alternation of the night, in the, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, in the alternation of the night and the day are clear signs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, specifies a group of people, ulil albab, a people who think and reflect, but also they have another, you know, characteristic, and that is that their minds avoid useless information, useless knowledge. That's not beneficial in this life or the next. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believers and mu'minun, in the same surah, surah al-mu'minun, he talks, وَهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهُ يَمْعَرِضُونَ one of the characteristics is that when it comes to vain talk, useless talk, they avoid it. They stay away from it. You know, subhanAllah, we live in a time where we probably do avoid, especially the younger generation, that vain talk when it comes to circles. But now we have Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and all these different devices that have useless information. Knowledge that will not benefit you, but rather destroys your attention span. Your concentration, your focus, your, you know, your lack of seeking true knowledge. Why? Because our minds have become a program to only watch 8 second videos, or 20 second videos, or to read statuses, and so forth. That it becomes hard to sit and listen to a sheikh, or to a scholar, or to be a true student of knowledge, or to memorize Quran, because of these devices. So then we have a role as a family and a responsibility to make sure that these don't overtake us, that you're always in control. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about also the concept here, that you know the same sky, we see it, we say subhanAllah, billions of other people see that same sky, they say it was an accident. Or it happened, this happened, it was science. For that we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that has given us the ability to recognize a reality that exists, did not happen on its own, but rather by the, by the will and authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes it's very important that we take these times, especially in our days of, these vacation days, days like this, where you take your family and you reflect on ponder, when you go to the park, you know, when you go to the zoo, or wherever you go here in Dallas, it's to focus on these creations and connect the dots to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize how great and powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah talks about وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ that when we seek... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through patience and salah and one of the characteristics and components of salah in order for it to have an actual impact is that we have khushu' that we actually have and khushu' here has many different interpretations but you're overwhelmed by the remembrance of Allah to the extent that nothing around you distracts you but also another explanation by the scholars is is that you're, you get a taste of the next life that you get a taste of meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your salah that you realize you're powerless, standing before the most powerful. And you know, when you see somebody famous sometimes, your body becomes numb, become nervous, right? You, have it, you know, you're going to meet somebody very important, whether in a company, whether in a, in a, in a, in a, in a mall or whatever it may be. Imagine in salah, you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most powerful, and you feel that feeling of numbness. Your body becomes numb. And then you say, Allahu Akbar. And then you say, Allah is greater than anything and everything. You put the dunya behind you. And you have that meaning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're talking directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You put your forehand on the ground to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Acknowledging we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That without Allah, we're not anything. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Without Islam, without La ilaha illallah, our life is empty and meaningless. Life without Islam is empty and meaningless, my dear brothers and sisters. So then you realize, you put your life back in focus, in perspective. So you go to the ayah, you see the skies and the moon and the night and the day, and you realize how everything is in order. That how everything is in this particular system by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah wants us to reflect and ponder, my dear brothers and sisters. Then we start to realize in the society, where you're always told about yourself. It's about me, me, me. 
my iPhone, my this, my that. You know, it's never about you. And it's about being selfless. And we learn from the story of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over and over again. It was never about him. It was never about revenge. It was never about, you know, promoting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was rather always promoting La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And when you make that your focus and life goal, then you don't see your image through the eyes of other people. You don't put your self-worth based on what others think of you, but rather it's a standard and a foundation of the Qur'an and the Sunnah that this is how you base your life upon. So kids are not looking to get, you know, put a picture of their, you know, one pack in front of a mirror or a sister, in front of the mirror seeking the acceptance of others knowing when Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسِنِ تَقْوِيمِ That Allah has fashioned us in the best of ways. Allah has made us the most beautiful creation. So I have no need or desire for anyone else to tell me so. Because I know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an. When the Qur'an becomes our foundation, we can't get pushed left or right. We don't compromise our thing easily. Whether in the toughest of times, or the easiest of times, or the happiest of times. We always go by that standard. So brothers and sisters, it's about time that we start to reflect and ponder and not become emotional Muslims. Not become Muslims that are reactionists, but rather we're proactive. With a new year coming, right? With new beginning, a new day, new opportunity. We must realize all of us must play that role. So we look at the Seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we give some examples. And number one, is that one time, there was a young boy, four or five years old, the brother of Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. He had a young brother who lost his bird. And the Prophet ﷺ goes and visits him, takes his time out. Imagine, you know, having nine, you know, many households to take care of, running a whole government, many responsibilities. And he goes and visits, and he asks him, Ya Abu Umair, ma fa'al al -Nuhair? You know, the bird's name was Nuhair. He asked him about his bird. Imagine your child, son or daughter, who loses their first toy, that experience they go through. And it's not about you buying them a new toy. A lot of times you think it's just buying and giving them more and more will make them happy. But rather, we learn from the Prophet ﷺ in this instance, is that he asked the young boy about a bird. And the thing is, Tarimidhi explains, he gave him a kunya, Ya Abu Umair, to build confidence in that young boy. To build confidence. So our young brothers and sisters, we shouldn't look at them as just kids. Or say they're the leaders of tomorrow because reality... They're the leaders of today. They're the leaders of today. If your son or daughter is 13 years old, 14 years old, and was to die today, my dear brothers and sisters, they'll be judged as adults. They'll be asked as adults. They'll be questioned in the grave by Munkir and Nakir as adults. So we need to stop treating them as kids. But rather put thoughts in their minds and realize that we need responsible kids, young adults, who can pave the way and be the leaders of our masajid and our institutions in our public schools, in the MSAs, in the colleges, that we empower them, not overconfidence, but put the right type of confidence and knowledge and the tools and resources so they're able to go out to the society, outside of the masajid, from the moment they step into their cars to the moment they reach their schools or jobs. They're proud of their identity, but before that they have to understand what their identity is. So the Prophet ﷺ built a positive association with this young boy. And he'll never forget that. He never did. And the thing is, a lot of times we think Islam is telling a bunch of ayat and ahadith, telling people they're wrong, finding the shortcomings in others, rather understanding is building that connection as a father with your son or son or daughter. Because you never want to come a time when your son's 15, 16 years old and you try to build it. At that time, you ask your son, how was your day? He says, it was good. Where did you go? Somewhere. What are you doing? Something. Where are you with? Someone. It's like an FBI interrogation. Right? That connection is lost. This is why these moments, days like this, are not days to waste. These days only come very short. You know, this time you have with your family, you never know when you're going to have it again. Take advantage of these moments. Take advantage of these times, my brothers and sisters. Because the freedom you have today, you may not have tomorrow. The house and car you have today or the measure, you never know what's going to happen. Never take what you have for granted. Never take what you have for granted. This is why that mindset of a Muslim is that there's no day to relax. That's why the Prophet ﷺ told his wife Khadija, لا راحة بعد اليوم. There's no rest after today. He realized what was coming before him. That was not going to be easy. 
But he knew he had to build his son with his family and those close to him and build that solid foundation. Another thing is, brothers and sisters, is that when we do this, is that when we deal and give da'wah, and God call us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be able to understand the person you're talking to, the group you're talking to, or who you're addressing. People work at different levels. So whether you're talking to an atheist or a Buddhist or somebody who's thinking about leaving Islam altogether, we should be able to approach people in the right way. And half of knowledge is to know when you don't know. Not to speak when you don't know. It's to know when you don't know and say, I don't know. And direct people in the right direction. So Prophet ﷺ, during the Battle of Badr, asked one of the companions, or sent one of the companions to find out how many men they had, how many soldiers they had in the Battle of Badr, the Quraysh. So the Sahabi interrogated the young boy from them, and he wasn't able to give them an answer. Prophet ﷺ asked them a very simple question. How many camels do they have? And they always said between nine and ten. Prophet ﷺ said they have around a thousand men. He didn't even have to ask the question to give the answer. He realized the, psychological, the psychology of the Arabs was that every camel represented such an amount of men and that the young boy can remember something small in number but big in size. So he asked him the question and he got the answer without having to ask the question directly. You know, when you get to that level of sisters, when you build a level of communication with your wife, with your children, where you're able to have those kind of conversations, where being nice is normal, right? Sitting up at the lunch at public school or something and being nice to your siblings is a normal thing. Being nice to your wife is a normal thing. That we're able to communicate without arguing. And for, you know, not having trust in each other. But have these solid principles of trust, loyalty, communication. Where yes, you're going to have those days where you disagree. As a family, as a community, as individuals. But you realize the foundation of La ilaha illallah overpowers everything. So you get angry for Allah, and you're happy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we learn from the Prophet ﷺ, that he interacted with his community. He interacted with the young of the community on a consistent basis. So then, when you have people like Osama bin Zayn, who's 16 years old, leading an army of giants, they followed. They had confidence in the young Sahaba, who though years before that were burying their own daughters alive, had no respect for each other. But now, now they separated all these imaginary walls of nationalism, tribalism, black and white, Asian, Arab, not Arab. They put all that to the side and realize there's a bond that can never be broken. And that bond is that ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And I emphasize that, my dear brothers and sisters, because a lot of times we hear about the walls that are being built around us. But a lot of times we have a lot of walls that we have to break ourselves. We have to break ourselves. You know, one of the things I do in Tampa is I'm a middle school and high school Islamic studies teacher. And I was teaching the senior boys, he asked a question about, you know, uh, Spending time, you know, we were talk, they were talking about in Ramadan how many people spend six, seven hours in hookah lounges, right? Right after tarawih. So we, we avoided the, the fifth part of it. But the idea is they're asking about marriage. And I said, subhanAllah, you guys at this age, fantasize, think about getting married. And all these different things. And then when people actually get married, and actually have a wife, an institution that in Islam, they don't spend time with their wife. They rather spend six hours outside of the house. Wasting their time playing cards. And then you ask, why is there a lack of communication? Why is there so many marriage problems? Why are all these things happening? The answer lies within us, brothers and sisters. Is that we waste our time doing things, not realizing what we have is so great, that we're seeking something outside, seeking the pursuit of happiness, not realizing what we have in our house is the best thing, not realizing those kids of yours, when they smile in your face, is priceless. That dinner you get in your house, never take it for granted. There's many that don't get that. That you're able to walk and sit and relax. You know, overseas many people are wondering, are they going to be bombed today or not? Are they going to have a meal the next day? How are they going to cover themselves in the cold? Right? So Ahlul were tested in the opposite way. Because they know their enemy. The enemy is clear. Here, the shaitan brings, comes from many different angles. And this is why you realize in the Quran when Allah says, when he addresses Adam alayhi salam, he doesn't tell Adam not to eat from the tree. He says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Don't even go near it. The same thing about zina. وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا zina. Don't go near fornication. He didn't say don't do it with itself. He said avoid everything and anything that will lead to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because then we realize that it's not about halal and haram. Islam is a way of life that teaches us how to use the bathroom, to how to run a business, 
to how to have a relationship, to how to interact and how to agree and disagree. So then you realize that this is so powerful, that it's bigger than you and me. So then you realize that these moments you have, that six hours you have, is not something you can waste easily like that. You can't just throw it away. And then ask the world, why, why do you don't feel sorry for us? No, we have to remove these walls. And realize, subhanAllah, you know, I came here a couple of days ago, and I'm visiting from Tampa, and subhanAllah, we saw the gym here. It's a great blessing you guys have, and the activities you guys have, and the mashayikh and scholars you guys have in your community. And a lot of times what we t- tend to do is, we seek, you know, we go to conferences, and we go to the places, it's good. But what we realize that, is that what you have here is great. That there's not really much need to go outside. If you were to take advantage of the resources we have here, subhanAllah, you would realize, you know, subhanAllah, you know, and when I'm in a principal of a weekend school, we had many refugees come from Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia. And our court that we have is an outdoor court that hasn't been remodeled in 20 years. Has a lot of issues. But they were so happy. It was the best thing they saw. They appreciated the basketball court. They appreciated the one that run down soccer field. It was like they never, they like had the mekan be jannah. They were so excited, simple. SubhanAllah, even when it came time for lunch, many wouldn't eat lunch because they said, you know, they didn't, want to, they didn't have money to pay for it. Because buildings are only valuable because of the people that come to it. The Prophet spent 13 years building companions, personalities. So there was no need to do a fundraiser for Masjid Quba. Why? Because he realized there were the youth who built it on their own, with their own hands. They realized the importance of having a place to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we train our love our kids and teach them the importance of Islam, they'll have $400 instead of buying LeBron shoes, or buying a jersey, or a video game, or PS4. They say, Baba, no, 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 no. This $400, $100 for the masjid, you know, $100 for the library, $100 to those refugees overseas, and $100 for whatever activity that's going on in our school. Their mindset changes. And when a father sees his son or daughter, what is meant for the sake of Allah, of course they'll give. And they'll give and they'll invest. Why? Because it sees how it affects their kids. So we have to build that connection. The problem is never money and resources. Trust me, it's not the problem. We have the resources. We have the minds. We have the professionalism. We have the ability. That's not the issue. The issue is is putting it in use and practice. And sometimes that takes you not sacrificing that TV and that's, you know, that extra leisure time and working and putting that mindset. And then you'll have families. These families make a community. So then... When somebody says something on TV about Islam and Muslims, you're not affected by that as much. We're not put into fear, not realizing we're not second class citizens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be citizens of a country where Allah has created. And Allah has given us the ability to work here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the ability to be successful. No one else. Allah can take it away at any time and He gives it at any time. And once you realize that everything's in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you keep moving forward and not looking back. My dear brothers and sisters, you know Allah says that I'm going to ask you 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 to Allah says that you command people with righteousness and birr and you forget about your own selves and Allah says do you not reflect and think you know subhanAllah a lot of times you know ta'qilun the opposite of it is being jahl or ignorant and a lot of times translate as ignorance the reality is if you look at Abu Jahl during the time of Prophet who was the biggest enemy of Islam at that time he wasn't really ignorant in the sense that he didn't have knowledge he knew the truth he understood the Qur'an better than all of us probably did. Or well. He understood the Arabic language. So ignorance wasn't his issue. Is that he had an emotional bias that prevented him from making irrational decisions. So even though he knew the truth and he saw the truth and was around the truth, it didn't reach the heart. So as we said in the beginning, when we reflect and ponder around the things about us, that we see the sky, we see the things, we realize that this is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you see through the eyes and the lens of Islam and the example and the standard of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu then everything starts to make sense. You don't say, why is this happening? You understand that this is all from Allah. And then the, and, and, and one of the ahadith of Prophet sallallahu in which the interpretation goes that everything that happens to the believer is khair, is good. 
But you may say, how is that? Because everything comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you realize any shortcomings from us, ourselves, that there's, you know, I did something wrong. This happened because Allah has given me a sign. A ch- you know, I was in ghafla, I was in heedlessness, I was in sleep. And it's time to wake up. And realize that, you know what, I can't do this again. We can't do the same thing and expect a better result. So then, brothers and sisters, as we start, you know, subhanAllah, a new year, and a new, a new, a new you know, time to reflect and ponder, just realize, it's not the time to get arguments about holidays and celebrating holidays. It's not a time to argue about, you know, these things that people put people and divide us. But rather, leave that for the scholars. What we need to focus on is realize that these times, that these days we have, we need to plan, because if you plan to fail, you fail to plan. And what happens is, that we just live life, you know, by, day by day, not realizing what we want. These things just happen. So plan your life. Set goals for yourself, for your family. What things you want to avoid. How you want to make this a better year. For your community, for yourself as an individual. But the more important, brothers and sisters, realize that all of us, together, we complete each other. And we need each other, and we need to work together. And realize that even this measure, as big as it is, is small in comparison to the size of the community. So then we need to not have this more buildings, but rather we need to cater and make sure that we're involved in all the programs, the HIPS programs, the, the activities, and everything that's announced. And then if it's not, something's not catering to, to some part of the youth, we develop something for it. We develop something for it. You know, I'll end with this story. I was, at a, I was invited to speak at a fundraiser for Ikhna Relief a couple of weeks ago. And one of the speakers, he made an interesting point. He said, hundreds of years ago, 25% of the slaves that came to this country were Muslims. And they were not allowed to practice their religion. So they brought them to parts like Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and other states. And as they were getting tortured, there's a story in one of the books that they would make dua for generations that come later, that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if they're not able to do it, the generations after them. And we're the answer of that dua, my brothers and sisters. We're sitting here. Somebody made dua. Somebody sat in these places where there used to be forests and trees. And he made that dua and he depended on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're the answer of that dua. And the thing is, sooner or later our kids will be adults. And they'll have kids and generations will come. And many of us came from generation, a thousand years of Islamic history. And we come to this country, leave everything behind. And start a new beginning in our lives. The thing is, don't underestimate the power of dua and sincerity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That hundreds of years from today, that people are praying in this masjid because of you. Because of your efforts. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put barakah in. Because you did it with a pure and clean heart. So don't underestimate this. That a thousand years from now, that people will be making dua for you. So the sound will not come and go. It will not be something to be studied in history books. Or say, this is what it used to be in America. But rather, they say, this is how it started in America. Because of the work of us, brothers and sisters, from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So never, never underestimate your power and your potential. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt. Wa aafina fi man aafayt. Wa barak lana fi ma aatayt. Wa kuna subhanna sharra ma qadayt. Allahumma inna ka afu wa tuhib al-afu fa'afu anna. Allahumma afir lana inna ka anta al-ghafur al-rahim. Allahumma tub alayna inna ka anta al-tawab al-rahim. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أشفي مرضانا وارحم موتانا وتوفنا مسلمين وارحمنا بالصالحين وقنا عذاب النار وقم الصلاه